Hey there, Internet. It's me, Broken Terrain. Guess what? That's right. I'm raiding my bits box one more time. Let's make some cool little MacGuffins for your tabletop. We're going to do it right after the drop. Once again, we're taking a look at the old bits box. This is the bits and pieces, the extras that I managed to scrounge from all the uh, model kits I've been making lately. Super excited about this absolute plethora of fantastic little pieces of plastic. Today's video, we're gonna focus on some bits and pieces that came from Game Workshop's Skaven Plague Monks. Those are the rat men dressed as monks with a very plaguey look to them. <laughs> um, I choose a couple of different pieces. There's a book with the hand attached. We're going to have to cut that hand off. I've got a, um, I guess it's a rat head, but to me, it looks like a dragon. It's got some horns on it. And so I'm going to turn it into like a dragon mask. And then the third bit uh, is this one here a little uh, topper for the uh, banner poles that the plague rats come with, the plague monks come with. And uh, I think it looks like a really cool little crystal ball type bit. And I think it would make an absolutely wonderful MacGuffin. So uh, here you see me cutting off the extra bits. The uh, mask and the crystal ball type MacGuffin don't have too much in the way of trimming and cleaning up some bits on the back no big deal this little book here though uh needs a little tlc it has it's intended to be in one of the plague monks hands like they're um forcibly sharing the word <laughs> of their plague monk deity i suppose <laughs> um but we're gonna we just want the book right the the little plastic book looks fantastic so some careful cutting and, uh, and shaving away of the exacto knife and I'm able to remove that hand. Pretty, uh, pretty well, actually. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Uh, and then you can see the, I know it's a rat head, but I'm gonna make it into a dragon mask. I'm gonna give a little explanation of my MacGuffins later in the book. I'm gonna turn to my pack of woodsies, the circle ones in particular, and glue uh, a couple circles to some small little metal washers. Uh, these are going to act as my base. I like uh, metal washers because they they can be magnetized and uh, I tend to use magnets quite a bit and they also offer a little bit of weight to your piece. Uh, that way if you're playing on the table and I don't know one of your uh, Mountain Dew Dorito drinking buddies lets out a belch <laughs> The sonic blast doesn't knock down your scatter with a, a nice weighted base. And then it's time to turn to my beads and some jewelry bits and pieces. I've got these great little fittings. Um, alone, they'd work as like bowls for tabletops and things. Uh, but if you get really creative, you can use them for all sorts of things. And in this particular um, use, I'm going to use it as a decorative base for these um, small little treasure pillars or um, pedestals. That's a better word for it, isn't it? So a little super glue. I've got one of those fittings. Then I place a nice long bead down on there and uh, and just super glue everything into place. I will say that if you're going to do something like this, please use uh, or make sure you have super glue accelerant on hand. This stuff becomes incredibly difficult to do um, without it. You have to kind of hold things in place for too long and the size uh, makes it incredibly difficult. Here's the first one finished. You can see I've used just two wooden discs with the bottom and top caps of the little pedestal and that little crystal ball fits absolutely wonderfully on top. I've got another similar pedestal created. I'm gonna use the tips of toothpicks three of them in particular, a longer one in back and two in front. And this is going to kind of hold the open book in place atop the pedestal. Uh, I really, really like the way this comes out. I'm really happy with it. 
and uh, a little later on in the video I'm gonna kind of describe um, well, maybe I'll do it right now. Heck, I'll do it right now. I had a, a real fun idea for this little magical book, MacGuffin. Lately, I've been looking online about all of the AI stuff, chat GPT and AI generated art and things. You guys, guys and gals seen that uh, at all? And uh, it's had me think in a certain way. And I thought, wouldn't that be cool if this book was like a magical AI. So the book itself was sentient, created from pure magic. And uh, all the book, although the book itself can be incredibly helpful, it is desperately trying to get someone to place it on a focal point, uh, like a magical focal point and, and the ley lines, presumably, right? So if we're following that same uh, modern day AI, uh, comparison the book is trying to be deposited in like the world wide web of magic and if it can get somebody to do that for it it will become an absolute monster <laughs> like a sentient magic force uh, that's living inside the world I absolutely love the concept and I'm kind of excited to uh, write a campaign around it so let me know what you think. You like the idea of a magical AI book trying to, uh, yes, it can be helpful and useful, but it's always trying to trick its owner into, uh, into slipping it into one of those magical ley lines, one of those focal points so that it can feed on and then, um, uh, and then interact with the magical forces of the planet. I thought that was a great idea. I love it. This one here you see, I know, I think it's supposed to be a rat head because it came with the Skaven, but it really does look like a dragon mask to me. And so for this particular MacGuffin, it is the Mask of the Dragon King. And for whoever manages to get their hands on it and wear the mask, they suddenly find themselves in mental control of all the dragons on the planet and uh, the obvious implications for such an item are obvious aren't they not right uh, uh that griv uh, a great foe for your uh, characters to face down and an absolutely terrifying magical item that uh, might find its way into the wrong hands so i love that idea as well this one here well it's very crystal ball-esque. It's your generic orb type thing. I have no particular plan for it uh, in any way, shape, or form. Though I will say it looks a little bit like a certain someone's beacon from Skyrim. <laughs> so if you want to do a Skyrim crossover or something, why that piece will work out absolutely amazingly. Now to catch up on the painting, uh, when all the pieces were put together, I took them outside when I could find the time. Thank you, Michigan weather. Oh my gosh, ice, snow, a little bit of sun, then back to ice and snow. Ridiculous. It has been nuts the last couple of weeks, but I finally found some time to get these outside, base them in a black, and then I go over the whole pedestal in a silver, pick out uh, bits and pieces with gold, and then, you know, the, the book cover gets a leather, the pages. I always go to a, like a mummy robe for uh, for cloth and things like that. And uh, and then I pick out uh, Earthshade, Agrax, Ath... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Citadel's, Citadel's brown wash, <laughs> the Earthshade. And, uh, and hit, hit all my pieces up. I'm going to take a page out of Wylock's book. Let's gem gem that dragon mask up. I really did want to do red ruby eyes for it. I think that would punch the best, but uh, size comparison, no, these little black gems um, work way better in scale. Love it. Looking great. I ended up uh, going in with like a void shield blue, something like that from Army Painter, hitting up that crystal ball, dry brushing the edges with a white just to make all those uh, neat little textury panels pop. And uh, that's that.
When I can, I'll take them outside for a clear coat. And here you can see Captain and Tinley investigating the treasures in the treasure room. They've come for the book, but Tinley just can't keep her eyes off those other two. Wait, Tinley, wait. Don't touch it. Don't touch it, Tinley. A new hand touches the beaten. Listen, hear me and obey. A foul darkness has seeped into my temple. 